nastiest creatures can be fun if the creators have a little panic. What makes this movie more than a ripoff? Is it, is it its humor itself? Is it its sense of style? Is it the script's infectious sense of humor and highly appealing performance? Even though it's campy, a mixture of three different genres could really help. I'll tell you what, for a low-budget 80s horror comedy, it's got a lot of violence. It's got a lot of cursing. It's got a lot of black balls that kill. Welcome to this week's Two Guys and Some Horror, where we're discussing Critters from 1986. Clark, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing very good, Curtis. I'm just doing a weird, funny voice for no reason because people don't like me and I'm trying to be more like No, sorry. Interesting. Uh, very interesting. I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Thanks for, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for your introduction. Another week, another movie. Another week, another movie, yeah. As, as we stay in stain doors, continually getting more and more stir crazy. Um, yeah, we're going to have to do a lot more episodes. <laughs> So this week, we are talking about Critters from 1986. It is our final week of space horror. And uh, yeah, so let's just go ahead and um, we'll dive in quickly to, I'll break down the movies, uh, director, writer, all that stuff, and then we'll let you do your quick review if you've got one. Um, and then we'll just break down the story. There's not a lot to this. It's a very easy 80s film. It, uh, in my opinion, it was a lot of fun. Um, and we'll get Clark's uh, idea from it too as well here shortly. So director. Stephen Herrick. Uh, some notable things that he's also done is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and The Three Musketeers. The writer is Dominic Muir, who wrote the story. Um, and then Muir also worked with Stephen Herrick, the director, on the screenplay. And then Don Keith. Uh, oh, that's right. What's his last name? It's Don Keith. Oh, shoot. I just had it. Don Keith Opper. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> is credited for helping write additional scenes for the movies. Um, and what movies am I talking about, Clark? Critters, Critters 1 through 4. So Don Keith Opper is Charlie McFadden. Um, he's in all four of the films, um, and that's really all he has to his name, but he is a very main character that we'll talk about here in a minute. Yeah, he's. Uh, I believe he's in every single Critters movie, and it's just they gradually get worse and worse and worse. The like only Critters. one I didn't even know there was a Critters Four. I <laughs> Critters Four was was bad, and I didn't know that they made more. Yeah. But I was looking at uh, on YouTube. They're actually shorts, and then there's a mini series right now on uh, on Shutter. On Shutter, correct. So you and I talked about planning this out a couple months back. Um, we, talked we talked about, about watching the new one, which then we realized it was a mini series. Yeah. So we might turn that into something of a bonus episode run, maybe. It's too, it's too much. But man. there's a like, lot. Maybe. There's that's, a lot. That's, you want me to talk about like an entire mini series of something that I, I saw. We, I watched like the first ten minutes of it. I'm honestly, man, I don't think it's horror. I don't think. I, I don't think it's like more it's just horror. comedy. Yeah. That's the only thing. Uh, unfortunately, that's the only thing that Charlie McFadden's character doesn't get called back for. He doesn't actually get a chance to be a part of the new binge on Shutter. So, not to dive too much into that because that's not what I'm here so to talk about. So Don Keith was uh, was a writer as well. He's credited for helping out writing additional scenes for the four films. So that means most likely they had given him a lot of input on what lines maybe were said, some of the script maybe. Um, but yeah, he's he's credited. There's there's I would love to see a documentary on how much he was involved because I think personally, I think these were a lot of fun as a kid. Now that I'm a little bit older, they're less fun for me, but these are great entry level horror films for kids, in my opinion. For kids, you know, in their teens and younger, depending on how willing you are to expose your children to horror films. I think Critters is a really good starting place. It's not too scary in a sense. It's more spooky, less scary to me. But um, I don't know. What do you think, Clark? Man, I'm sorry. I was looking up Don Keith Opera. It looks like he he has quite he has quite a successful career as an actor. Uh, he he's been acting until like 2005. Just uh, he's I think he's a lot older than I thought he would be. He was born in 1949. 
He's yeah, not, he's not a young buck. He he's a lot. He looks a lot younger in the movie than I thought he was. So to, like, this is him in his early, I just, late thirties to early forties. I just want to be careful when you say a successful career. This is very similar to a D list actor we talked about last week, where yeah, a lot of it pretty pretty big shows like Roseanne and I wouldn't several several movies. He was in Twenty One Jump Street, Quantum Leap, L.A. Law. These aren't small name things. These no, are, but they're also really one episode. They're one episode, one part. Like for okay. Rose Roseanne, he's a policeman. Did he pull her over, and then that was his five minute scene? Like, you're, you're right. He's not a. I'm just trying to bend the rule here, like we did for our D he's, list. He's had, he's had a career. <laughs> he has a career. In yes. Acting. Yes. He's not. I wish he would have got more time i guess or i would love to have seen he wrote pink he was a writer for painkiller jane yep um like you said critters he's he's done some work so we'll give him yeah i'll give him a pass last thing was 2005 poor guy <sighs> yeah um i i wish he would have gotten work in uh you know with shutter on critters and the new binge i guess that was kind of my big thing is like the one thing you're known for is all the critters films realistically yeah, and but it's, and then someone else owns it yeah yeah what, what can you do this this movie is uh it's goofy anyhow i don't know man like th this movie a quick review here this is this is gremlins it we they originally this is like we, we talked about earlier you and me in private before like behind the curtain for the audience we talked about this movie is essentially it, it feels like a ripoff of gremlins since it came out after but it was written before gremlins yeah that's that's the weird part is i i don't um i mean i would assume the information that you know that we get is all hearsay it's what someone heard so they write it wrote it up and it gets put out on the internet wherever it gets put but I, I believe there was a there was an iteration written before Gremlins came out. But the way this movie plays, it takes inspiration from how Gremlins was made in in production. I'm pretty sure. Just because the writing was done, doesn't mean the filming was done. Right. It almost feels like it would have to. Right. This movie, yeah, Gremlins came out before. Like it was like a year before. Uh, I don't have Gremlins. Oh yeah, 1984. So two years roughly. Two years before. So. Yeah, no, that's there's no way they spent two years making this movie in production. Well, I mean, you know who made the the critters special effects, right? The the monsters and whatnot. That's that's fine, but there's there's so many scenes kind of similar to to Gremlins, not like the whole hijinks cartoonish bullshit. Because these critters are vicious creatures. They they're kind of like little thugs who are just kind of fucking around with people's shit. Like they're dicks. They're they're like gangsters. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very similar to the gremlins. I wouldn't say like the monsters for they don't the monsters don't look like gremlins. They look like hand puppets because they are hand puppets. Except for the big one who just looks stupid. So we could just kind of jump into this since this movie's uh, obviously gremlins, but it's not gremlins. But I'm pretty sure it is. And whatever excuse you make doesn't really matter because you definitely took inspiration from gremlins. Uh, so the storyline the storyline is a massive ball of furry creatures from another world eat their way through a small midwestern town followed by intergalactic bounty hunters opposed only by militant townspeople and i actually disregard that entire last section opposed only by let's be real when we get to that point in the story ourselves when we're breaking through this synopsis nobody opposes them let's be real well no it's the people that the people are opposing other aliens, not them, because a bunch of dicks. So the movie starts out like in space, and there's like a bunch of aliens, very Star Trek esque. The weird guy with the kind of snail guy mm -hmm. shows up once in the whole movie. They probably spent a lot of money on that costume. Yeah, it, says, it was Bounty Hunters, very these creepy. These creatures have gotten out. I need you to capture them. Please use your transformation abilities to catch them. It'll come very come in handy please don't destroy shit we had to pay there was a lot of shit that went down because you blew everything up in the last place yeah they blow everything up they, they, re they, they wreak havoc 
They shoot a piano. They blow the front door off a house. They blow the kitchen why wall they, out. Why would they shoot a piano? I don't know. Maybe they thought a, uh, uh, a critter was in there? No, it's just stupid. They drive into a church, and they just like, walk inside, and they're like, Where are the Krites? And one of them transformed into a sheriff who got killed by a Krite. And he's like all, his head's like all sagging and everything for, that didn't make any sense, but he's like acting like he's dead. And so they blow the fuck out of a church. It's like the first scene when they're, they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, when the other guy like shoots the police car with a shotgun because he doesn't know how it works, even though they have a gun with a trigger. They have their boomsticks actually. <laughs> Which are guns. Yes. So, so these, so these two guys, they're they're definitely aliens. They don't they don't understand human culture. They don't even they barely even understand what the hell they're doing. Um, yeah, you know, one one of them replicates themselves as a lead singer from a rock band. His Billy name Zane. is Johnny Steele slash Ugg, and Johnny Steele is the lead singer of the band. Billy Zane's character is the boyfriend. Who, oh, Steve Elliott. Yes, who doesn't have a very long. Uh, I'd say life in this oh, film. Oh man, no, he his character is great though because he's like, "Golly gosh, Jane, I don't think your dad would approve of this." Yeah, no, he's he's actually, I'm I'm really surprised. Usually, you'd see a guy like that. So his parents are rich; they bought him this really fancy car. Chicks dig fancy cars in high school, right? Obviously, every movie tells you that. And he's not a bad guy. He is a really good guy, and. <laughs> I don't understand why he gets killed. I really don't. It kind of bugs me. First guy to die. Well, I don't know. They had to kill. They had to kill someone off. And since he's not part of the family, they're like, "All right, we'll kill the boyfriend because everybody fucking hates the boyfriend." But let's make him likable. Anyway. And it, yeah, I just I, <laughs> that sucked. That sucked bad. But well, when the critters <laughs> show up, like mm -hmm. they land on the planet. What's the first thing they want, man? They want food. Yeah, they want food. So they land on a farm. Yeah, they land on the farm, they eat a cow. <laughs> they eat a cow, they eat all the chickens. They... <laughs> the kid and his dad, they, they see what happened to the cow. Uh, we're introduced to them, by the way, in the film. We get the whole introduction where the kid is with his never-do-well Charlie, who's the kind of, he's kind of crazy. He hears messages in his teeth, like signals from aliens. Not really, but... Wait, you don't hear messages in your fillings? Anyhow, <laughs> he uh, he gets out of jail and he goes back to work with this family on the farm, the Brown family, who are our main characters. The little boy especially. And the boy, Charlie, like has a slingshot and he's like aiming for the can, but he hits uh, the daughter's butt and they blame the son and the son takes, takes the heat like a bro. Yep, he covers for Charlie so that way Charlie doesn't get fired. He gets grounded for Charlie. No dinner. It's just a bro moment. No TV for two weeks. And you can forget about your allowance until that car's... Fi oh, wait. Wrong movie. Sorry. So, fast forward this movie a little bit. And the bounty hunters have now landed as well. Right. And they... Uh, you know, a couple of people have already died. Uh, I believe Jeff, one of the cops, he's already dead. Yes, and they, they, well, they land right next to his... To his, car, right? Yep. So they, and then one of them turns into him, basically. Right. One of them keeps keeps transforming, and the other <laughs> but, one is. Uh, but he turns into the dead, mutilated version of Jeff, which is just so funny to me. Like, I know you're an alien and you don't know anything, but look at Johnny Steele, and he then walks around like a zombie. <laughs> yeah, and then look at what you got turned into. Like, come on, man! No way. Oh God, that's so funny. But yeah, then they go to that church. And now this is where Clark was talking about just how ridiculous they act. I mean, they just walk in. Where are the crates? Where are the crates? Yeah. And then they just start, you know, wreaking havoc and blowing stuff Make up. Sure not to destroy anything. Hey, guys, let's drive into this church and shoot a fucking piano. And then we're going to turn into the... Uh, but remember, I mean, church. that guy's not their boss. That guy is whoever hired them to take care of the critters. And these are bounty hunters that they just, their job is to take care of the critters by any means necessary. But they have the destruction undo button too, which we'll see later on in the film. So I don't understand that their point there. 
I don't know, maybe the um, the continuity isn't so great there when it comes to the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie. There's some deus ex machinas for, you know, <laughs> just because, hey, we can't leave things shitty. What was what, what, what the audience going to think? Well, and oh. and Brad ends up befriending them a little bit later on, right? After the bowling yeah. scene. So Yeah, well, that, that was just bizarre, the whole thing. And they're kind of try, they're trying to E.T. it. Because, <sighs> uh, you know, you have to. Yeah. They, when the bounty hunters, like, after they go to the church, like, the the other one takes the form of the preacher, and they go to the bar where they meet Charlie. And Charlie's there drinking. He's like, I'm telling you, they're here. I feel into my feelings. Which, you know, coincidentally, the critters are there, and they're starting to murder and eat people. And the bartender's like, Charlie, drink as much as you fucking want. Just don't talk to me. And he gives him the bottle. Oh, yeah, at the bowling alley. Yeah, the bowling alley. Yep, the bar in the back of the bowling alley. It's pretty standard bowling alley, I guess. Well, it's goofy. <laughs> it's great. It's great because they show up at the bar and the guy picks up the bowling ball because he, he's like, is that a critter? He points the gun at it and then he picks it up and he's like, oh, what the fuck is this? Picks up the bowling ball and then just throws it. Doesn't even touch the lane. It just – and it explodes when, or one of the pins explodes when it hits, <laughs> makes content, and the guy's like – I wonder whose whose team he's on. Well, the one the one, Lighter. yeah the the bowler he's like, I wonder what he's on, like drugs or performance enhancements also or whatever. Like I think I thought he was like he said something about the game, right? Yeah, one guy says whose team's he on, and then the other guy goes, I don't. Uh, I think he says like I don't care. I want to know what he's on, like oh. what enhancement he's on, because he wants to be able to bowl that well, right? I mean. The guy chucked the ball too, and destroyed uh, it. A bit too strong there. And they start threatening people in the shop saying, where are the Kreitz? Where are the Kreitz? Like, like these people know what the fucking Kreitz are. Well, and so here's the other funny thing. The, the alien who keeps transforming into people, he's now switched from being Jeff to the town's reverend at the bowling alley. And then he switches to Charlie. And then he switches to Charlie in the, alley, in the bar. Yeah. And, and they're like, it was three people. It was Charlie, the preacher, and uh, something, something. All right, let's be and fair here. Said, these yeah, he transformed, which... these town folk aren't the brightest, okay? Let's be real here. They're definitely not the smartest folks in that bar. They're drunk. They're probably not remembering everything too realistically, okay? Well, let's... Harv, our good old sheriff of town. Who's in so many movies. I just got to credit this guy. Yeah. He's, Emmett uh, is in everything I've seen. He's in Blade, Blade Runner, which we talked about last week. He's in a movie that I love around the holidays, uh, Christmas with the Cranks. And then I see him in this movie. Like this guy, I can't get away from this guy. He's in everything. One of those faces. He's very, uh, he's very typecast. Yeah. He's a good actor. He usually plays somebody in authority. But anyways, back to the main fact. <laughs> Sorry to sidetrack us again. No, no, it's it's fine. He gets a phone call and he's like, "This better be goddamn important." He's one of those kinds of guys, and he goes on like this wild goose chase to find the, and he kind of winds up on the Kreitz at the last scene mm -hmm. as one of the characters. Uh, he has no real character building. He's just kind of in the middle the, the film. He's just there as comedic relief, I would guess. And he's like, the lady's like, "I haven't even seen uh, Jeff Barnes because Jeff Barnes is hitting on." Sally, yeah, Lynn Shea. And what's going on at the farm at this point? Who's who's having the coitus? So April <laughs> April and Billy Zane are getting it on in the uh farmhouse in the barn. Oh, and and he goes to change the tape. This was the scene, this was the moment I realized I've seen this before. And I thought I had seen it before, but I didn't remember any of it really. Other than a little bit of the boy and Charlie shooting the, um, the what you call it at at sister's butt, uh, the slingshot, and then this part, this part right here. So Billy Zane reaches up to change the tape cassette, and gets his fingers bitten off by a critter. Then the critters continue to attack Billy Zane, and unfortunately, our good friend Billy Zane dies here. This is where Steve's character ends. This was it. That's all he got. He didn't even actually get to have coitus. They they still had all of their clothes on. Uh, it's a, it's PG thirteen. Like they're not gonna. Oh no! Obviously, I, I'm just I'm just feeling bad for him because I'm pretty yeah. sure 
he he was such a good guy. <laughs> we uh we hardly knew your character. I wish I would have got to know your character better. You know, if you were the main character instead of the daughter, I would have I would have been fine with that. If she died instead of you. Yeah, she didn't no, do anything for this movie. Not, not saying she was unlikable. I'm just saying I liked him more than her. Uh, Agreed. So he dies. Sister April kind of keeps herself protected for a moment. Tries to use a pitchfork on the critter, but a critter bites, bites it. the pitchfork bites head it. off. Yeah. And then she's using the stick to protect herself. And then good brother Brad comes in to save her. And... Uh, uh, m80 and the critter eats it lights m80 throws it into the critter's mouth or onto the floor Your homemade homemade fireworks yeah homemade explosive critter then kind of blows up Boom. a little bit out. and then passes out so, yeah. Yeah. and and they get back to the house and they're safe so the family is uh safe for the moment but then they decide to go into the basement to investigate some more sounds mm-hmm and this is where all of this the uh the sheriff's on his way slowly meandering towards the uh their farm as well as the uh he stops the at the night. church first yep blowing shit up and trying to find everyone just asking for the crites and just shooting people and beating the shit out of people you know we get inside the house and in the basement the dad's like the, like the power goes off right mhm so they're in the house they're all locked in the power is out. Dad goes downstairs, and the dad finds one of the critters, and you see it, and he sees it, and he's just like, "Oh, I'm just gonna walk towards it." And I, I appreciate this because there's no jump scare at, at all. It's just there's the fucking critter. There's the crite. It's just there. We see it. He sees it, but he's just gonna walk towards it and poke it. Yeah, he acts like almost like it's just this this ball like he doesn't know what it you know he doesn't i'd be freaking the fuck out at this point yeah i i wouldn't be going near it no a weapon or something and the critter attacks him starts biting his neck shoots him in the leg with uh was it his leg he he spikes him in the leg he gets bit he gets bit in the shoulder then he gets one he gets bit in the leg but when he's crawling up the steps he gets one i think in the back Okay, so that's when he gets shot, and he pulls it out, and he's like, yeah. I'm numb. Well, he gets shot in the arm, doesn't he? Because, like, his he, numb. That's what's weird is I, I remember him getting shot in the back, but then he does complain about his arm being paralyzed, like numb, basically. Yeah. Might might be. Maybe it's just like a paralysis. He's like, I'm starting to feel it again, honey. Thank you. D. Williams, by the way. Could be where he that, got hit. The, the mother of the 1980s is the mom in this movie. So if you watch yeah. this movie, you're going to recognize the mom. Yep. She's the mom in every 1980 film. E.T., Cujo, Critters. I really love the reference to E.T. there because we do get the Critters playing with the E.T. doll up in Brad's bedroom Who later on. Who are you? And there's beating the shit out of him, yeah. I, I just, I don't know. It's definitely a fun 80s movie, so I guess I can't really, like, we shouldn't complain about that. That's, I mean, it's fun. They're being fun. Yeah. Well, it's it's cool because like the, we get a little, we get some exposition of the critters like playing around a little bit, eating the kids' goldfish, tearing mm-hmm. up pillows, just being little little shits. When you get subtitles then, when the critters talk, which I think is really fun. Yeah, that's that's the fucking problem too. Instead of like, I don't know, is this a horror movie or is this like a so it is like, just for fun movie? And that's that's kind of where they're not really citing a line. It is a comedy. Horror, yeah, a bunch of hungry sci-fi. assholes. Well, it's a comedy because everything's so fucking over the top, except for like yeah. people are dying and getting eaten. I mean, every Critters movie is a comedy, though. I mean, every one of them. They devolve, except for was, four. This one you can take a bit more seriously than the other ones. <laughs> yeah, I bet, man. I bet. Um, they, yeah, no. After Critters two, it's just like they're not even trying to to not be funny it's just just goofy campiness this one's probably the least campy of the of the films which is funny because this one fits to me like fits in that perfect bucket of all those if you want to put on a horror movie that you feel comfortable watching with friends to laugh at and kind of joke about and have a good time and if your kids are there hanging out 
you're not going to feel bad if they walk in on something because it's really not that bad. You know what I mean? It's not Jason cutting off someone's head or Freddy slicing somebody open kind of scary. Um, yeah, no, it's just... <sighs> it's campy. I like the word campy. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, anyhow, like... Wait, 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 real quick. So we, we talked about bowling a lot, but we didn't talk about the best part of the bowling. Okay. The dad's the team, part. the shirts that they wear. So I love bowling. Oh, the I've... crash dummies. <laughs> crash test dummies, yeah. No, I was talking about the Ghostbusters logo one. I thought it was crash test dummies. The Pinbusters. Oh, the Pinbusters is yeah. that what they were? Who you gonna call? That's cool. I didn't I didn't know that. It looks uh yeah, so listeners, uh I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up for, for Clark as well. But if you look at the logo, it's a it's a pin with a big giant red circle and a slash through it. And it's shaped, you know, styled just like the Ghostbusters logo, which I thought was really funny. Cause at first I'm like, is that a Ghostbusters logo on the back of his thing? And then I'm looking at it, and I'm like, no, 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 I, I, oh, it is. It it's is. a, it's I Pinbusters. It. Yeah, yeah, their team name was probably Pinbusters. I would have loved to have had that team name. That would have been the best team name in the league. <laughs> so it's probably copy copyrighted now. They're gonna find you. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be like, want to take our name? You gotta pay us money. They're gonna take my league winnings. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, <laughs> but I wanted to talk about like the shotgun. Williams gets the shotgun. You okay. Know, the critters are there. The dad's got the bandage on. He's, I think he gets shot again, and he kind of just like it knock, gets knocked the fuck out. And the mom opens the door, and she misses the first shot. And then one of them's like, "They have weapons." And the other one's like, "So what?" The mom po- points the shotgun out and just blows one of them up into smithereens with the buckshot. And the other one just looks at him and he goes, "Fuck." Yep. The critter drops the f bomb. It's so good. Oh man, <laughs> like okay. Buddy just got I'm shot. Just- <laughs> Yeah, after he told him it's no big deal. He's like, so what? <laughs> Boom. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, man. It's so funny. So Brady jumps in his bike. Critters look bigger, right? When they yeah. go back into the house. She's yeah. Like, they look bigger than before because the critters are growing as they, they eat more and more. So then the dad talks to Brad or talks to the family. He's like, someone's got to go get help, whatever. So Brad offers to ride his bike to go and get help comes across the two bounty hunter aliens. Um, one looks like Charlie now, and one looks like Johnny Steele. And Brad recognizes both of them. He's like, wait, you're Johnny Steele. Charlie, what are you doing here? And then end up, they basically they have like a five second conversation about, wait a minute, like, who are you? You can't be them, blah, blah, blah. And then they both realize they're after the same thing. They're trying to stop these critters. So Brad ends up telling Charlie and... Uh, Johnny Steele where to go Um, and they head back to the house where the family's holding off the critters for the moment and these two bounty hunters to enter the the house just blow the hinges off the front door and then they walk into the kitchen first thing he does blows down the kitchen wall so now they have this nice big giant dining room slash kitchen area it's wonderful but they start wreaking havoc and the bounty hunters do and trying to kill all the critters everyone's passed out two or everyone passes out except for the young boy and the uh charlie Mm -hmm. who's our never do well and this at this point all the critters start really dying until uh you know i think the the kid when he rides his bike the big one who's the biggest one at that point kind of like knocks his bike down and before the kid kind of reaches the point where the guys meet up right and Remember at the the point where the, the, he's looking inside the uh, the chicken coop and he sees one of them just grow really fucking big, like about the size of a person, right? Yeah, after it ate all the chickens. So they're locked in upstairs before all this is happening, before the guys kind of show in, and then like this big critter hand kind of pushes through one of the drawers in the dresser that's against the window and starts grabbing people. This yeah. This is where we see... He tries to grab April, and then the dad takes like a hairspray and the lighter and burns the hand of the big critter. Yeah. And so while all this is happening, we have all the warfare going on. They find explosives or the kids like, I'm going to get all these explosives or, or whatever. And the daughter gets taken at some point in the film and she's starting to get dragged into the spaceship with the rest of the critters. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember like, 
So Charlie stops Brad from going in there like once or twice, which I just felt very like, the frick are you doing, Charlie? Like, leave him alone. <laughs> let him get in there. If he wants to save his sister, let him go. But, um, but yeah, so he's got the big homemade firework or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he sneaks in there and, and the pin is still in the, the spike is still in his sister's neck and she's passed out. So he pulls it out. And then she starts to come to and wake up. But Big Critter kind of catches their scent or hears them or sees them. So she gets out, but then the kid is kind of being attacked slash chased by the Big Critter while they're in the, the spaceship. And then uh, the Critters try to take off because they want to escape. They want to you know, move on to another world or whatever. Right. And he drops the giant firework but couldn't light it in the spaceship and he jumps out and then charlie's like hey you know i got i got an idea so he takes his bottle of whiskey and he takes like a rag and he stuffs it in there and creates like a maltov and then right. you know brad's trying to light it but he can't and then finally he gets it lit charlie throws it kobe nails it one shot in the spaceship first try Good job, Charlie. You've been fucking up the entire movie, and you finally got your redemption. Dudley do right, finally. <laughs> Until you open your fucking mouth again. Hey, you guys looking for a mechanic? <laughs> I can fix things real good. Yeah, he gives the... Well, that's the thing. Like, I want to know what that card is that he gave Brad. He gave him the little remote. Um, it's the like, little remote is it like a phone? Is it like something to call them? Yes. So it's like a remote control, but then Brad put pokes a button for no reason and all of a sudden their house gets fixed uh, yeah. just kind of go back together and it gets fixed but later on in the second movie that's what calls the bounty hunters back to earth later on in the second movie in the second movie that's what they use to call back the bounty hunters because uh, they make another appearance ah so critters 2 brad is the same actor mm -hmm. his parents and his sister are gone and charlie's in it as well Charlie is, Charlie joins the bounty hunters at the end of this film. Yeah, that's what it looks like when he's walking they off. They don't really show that. They don't really show any of that, but, you know. And Brad and his family get their house back, living happily ever after, until we see eggs in their barn. Mm-hmm. Or their coop. Which I thought was pretty cool. Hinting to the sequel. Yes, hinting to a long, long sequel. Well, if you like Brad... Or Scott Grimes, as he goes by in the real world, that guy he's a, he's in the Orville. He's 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 worked he's worked very well. He, he's yeah. continued his career as an actor. Throughout. He he looks like someone who is um, a fan favorite of Todd McFarlane or, or Seth McFarlane. I mean, because he's on American was it American Family? No, American Dad, Family Guy, and the Orville, which are all. McFarlane shows and he looks yeah, like he's, the, uh, he's that redheaded engineer guy yeah in the, uh, Warville. and then he's a bunch of different characters for McFarlane in all of the animated shows mm -hmm. um, but yeah so just from 2005 to 2020 so that's 15 years he's been bankrolled by McFarlane just for 15 years alone McFarlane has got him on the bankroll and then if you look at all the other stuff that he was working on, you know, in between there, it's it's amazing. He's done an ama uh, like a great job. It's amazing. I, I really like looking at horror actors and actresses and seeing that they got to do other things just besides getting stuck in, in that, that segment. Because unfortunately, too many times, I think, you know, a lot of our beloved actors and actresses that we actually like, they get kind of stuck and pigeonholed into these you know, roles, they get typecasted a lot. And then, uh, you know, you miss out on actually getting to see their potential in other things. Anything else on Critters? Yeah, it was fun. It's a fun movie. It's not good. It's not great. It's not bad. It's, it's, it's good. It's okay. I agree. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It's kind of, if I want to watch a movie like this, I'm going to watch Gremlins, Gremlins 2. I don't feel like this really fits me. You heard it from him himself, folks. Does it fit you, Curtis? I think 
this movie has a very clear difference between itself and Gremlins. I don't think you would call either of them really a ripoff. I'd say more than anything, like these movies have some similarities, but that's it. Like the storylines are completely different. One is space based. One is not. One is about a, a young man kind of learning to handle life. And the other is just about some crazy ass aliens that came here and some bounty hunters to get after him. No one's really learning any life lessons. Um, in the end, they're, it's amusing to see the mayhem they kind of get in, which is what I attribute to the Gremlins' likeness. Yeah, I just I don't see the the critters getting into too much mayhem here, other than trying to eat people and things. And well, it's just the the period when they're playing with like ET and stuff. That's yeah, it's kind of like okay. Yeah, so that that was I mean that was a fun scene for sure. I thought that was really funny. I feel like establishing the critters as being a little bit more intelligent than they were would have been a bit better because like they're, they're just little thugs. They don't do anything but eat. Eat and grow, baby. Eat and grow. Eat and grow. All right. Well, are we ready to move on to our fun facts and trivia? Let's do it. Cool. So, Corey Burton is the gentleman who voices the critters. He's also the person who came up with their language, which he describes in interviews as being a combination of French and Japanese. I don't know either of those languages well, and uh, I couldn't tell. <laughs> Terrence Mann performs the song Power of the Night as Johnny Steele, especially for this movie. One of the fun facts is just talking about how even though this I don't know. It, it's it's promoted as New Line's answer to Gremlins. You know, their claim is that the screenplay had been written and bought long before Gremlins was announced. Um, and Herrick had based the screenplay, he says, on a nightmare he experienced as a child long before Gremlins was conceived. So that's where, like, a lot of that conversation makes me laugh whenever we talk about uh, Critters being a Gremlins ripoff and things like that. I mean, it's all over the the internet and the message boards and whatnot. Everyone seems to have that same feeling but i don't i just don't get it um the critter emerging from the toilet is an homage to ghoulies where there's a very similar themed movie that used a small monster coming out of the toilet that also is is it a homage to ghoulies or is it just a critter trying to get out of through the toilet that's that's what i'm yeah cuz the cuz even in ghoulies the first one i'm pretty sure it doesn't come out of the toilet, right? That's Ghoulies 2. You and I had well, a conversation about that. One of them hides in the toilet in Ghoulies 2. I haven't seen Ghoulies. Yeah. Um, I've seen Ghoulies, and I don't remember the first one having that slime monster in the toilet. I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen in the first one. But believe you. Charles Chiodo based the design of the Krites on the Looney Tunes character Taz, the Tasmanian Devil, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, here we go. The logo on the back of the bowling uniforms is a parody of the iconic Ghostbusters emblem. The colors of the uniform match the colors of Egon Spangler's uniform in the real Ghostbusters animated series. Holy smokes. That's cool. I like it. Yeah. Um, this is the only Critters movie where one of them grows to human size. The other movies don't seem to show them grow much from eating. So it seems like they don't ever get that big again. But so like you said, in Critters 2, they grow a little bit. No, no, no. There's a nod to the big critter in Critters ah. 2. You'd have to see it because uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be watching the other critters probably, so please don't do that. Uh, Don Opper and Terrence Mann are the only actors to appear in all four critter films. Their characters, Charlie McFadden and Ugg, respectively appear in all four movies. That's Critters cool. 2, by the way, I feel is the best one. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's it's campier, it's more humor humorous and it's Yeah, I feel like it's a bit more enjoyable. This one's not bad. Just I don't know. I like it. Okay, and the last fun fact is more of just like a uh explanation of things. So when the critters are destroying the bedroom, one comes across an ET extraterrestrial vinyl plush toy and devours it. This adds to the satire of the film, referencing and homaging Hollywood's monster boom with films like Gremlins, Ghostbusters, and Ghoulies, all coming out between 1982 and 1985. 
Um, I mean, I really, I really do feel like if anything, this was just new line trying to really, you know, get their monster creature feature film out there. Like everybody else. They're just fucking around. Like yeah. they're, they're poking fun. I don't, does he eat the ET plush? Cause I know he's yeah, poking he it. bites the head off of it. At it. Uh, yeah. Which I thought was pretty funny. But yeah, yeah I mean, I like, know. you know, there are tons of screenplay scripts, stories, you know, writers are pushing out so much content and they have been for a very long time to different uh, production companies, right? That I wouldn't be surprised if movie companies right now are just sitting on buttloads of Critters knockoffs jason knockoffs you know halloween knockoffs whatever it might be just waiting for that moment where someone releases one again and it kind of sparks that interest from all of us viewers and we all flock to the theater and we see it and then they're going to be like okay push ours out now because it's popular again um it seems like a pretty standard thing to do for for film companies mm. hey this is popular right now okay let's put ours out there we've got one in the can Let's push it out right now so that way we capture, you know, some of those attractions as well. We're, we're always copying something someone else is doing, trying to figure out what their piece for, for success is. Well, that's going to be our episode for this week. Um, I'd like to just take a moment to remind everyone, you know, be safe. If the coronavirus scare is still happening, um, we are recording this a little bit in advance. Um, so... If you're still self-quarantined or if you're getting back from being self-quarantined, just remember, continue to wash your hands. Be safe. Don't cough on people. Don't let people cough on you, that kind of a thing. And, uh, yeah, just just primarily I think Clark and I would just want to say, you know, be safe. And, and thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for being a part of, um, you know, our show and what we produce. Um, you can continue to follow us if you'd like or start following us at the number two guys horror pod on twitter and instagram we post updates uh, almost daily on the twitters and grams out there um, and if you'd like to send suggestions please feel free to message us on either of those social media platforms or you can also email us at to the word guys and some horror at gmail.com um, you can find that on our twitter uh, and instagram as well in the bios um, I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of the countries that are listening to us, some geographic location information for you guys. Um, I think it's really cool to see where some of our listeners are coming from. This might be new information to Clark as well. I'm not sure the last time he checked. So um, here we go. We have listeners in Guatemala, the Netherlands, Australia, Chile, Indonesia, Canada, and the good old UK. Um, most of our listeners are uh, actually here in the US with us where we are located. Um, big chunk of them actually being in Colorado. So thanks for listening in Colorado. We appreciate you. And uh, each week I'll probably kind of keep my eye on these stats and try and give a little shout out to wherever we see people listening to uh, us from. And, and, uh, and yeah, if you haven't, you know, we got a big catalog of episodes. Um, maybe go check out some of the older ones if you hadn't had a chance to listen to them. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate it when you guys um, like stuff, retweet stuff on, on our social media. So continue to do so, please. We really appreciate thanks, you guys. For all, this is just us having fun. So thanks for having fun with us. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs> Trapped in strong barrier, surrounded by maggots, low on five bucks, home star me of darkness.